Uh, this, uh, we're, we're still working on surface area volume, but now I'm like looking at a sphere. So I kind of like this picture of a sphere. You can kind of see what's going on here. It is made up of these like circles. What is this? Are we okay? Are we okay? Um, if, uh, just a terminology, if you were to find this circle that contains like the diameter of a sphere, uh, that's called a great circle. And it's kind of like you slice that thing in half. And it's just a term that I forgot to put on there, so I want you to know that. But I like that little picture of a sphere. Uh, so what is a sphere? It's a set of all points in space, equidistant from a given point. When we talked about the um, definition of a circle, we also had a center. And it was like kind of two-dimensionally, the points equidistant from that center. Well, now I'm in space. So in any direction, uh, three dimensions, uh, equidistant from a center, that's a sphere. The center, obviously, is that point that you're starting from. It's the center of the sphere. And a radius, just like in a circle, if you start from the center and you go to any point on the sphere, so now we're in three dimensions. So there's some like coming straight out at us, too. So we're in three dimensions now, radius of a sphere. We also have chords. And again, same thing like a circle. It's just uh, the endpoints are any two points on the sphere. You can have chords and spheres. And you can have diameters. So again, here's that great circle. Here's your diameter. So, right here, here it is, this sphere. Surface area, look at that. Remember, we were working with all these crazy, crazy surface area formulas? 4 pi r squared. So you take uh, a circumference, I'm sorry, an area of the circle times 4. You get the surface area. So, uh, easy enough. So, we're in example A, you're middle of the page, find the surface area of the sphere. So, um, I still want you writing your math essay. I still want to see all this stuff written out. So I know what you're doing, and it's not just the number of page. I'm using this formula, and then I am plugging in my values that I know to find the value I don't know, which is this one. So that's an 81, and 81 times 4 is, I hope, 324 pi. Check my work, because you know me, I will make mistakes on that part. Is that right? 81 times 4? Okay. And if I wanted the exact surface area, here it is. Now, or if I want to get what that is estimated, I just did three twelve. Oops, that we do that. Well, we have to write both the definition. You you read the question. If it says give me the answer to the nearest tenth, then you don't have to. Okay, hang on. Let me just finish the question and I'll answer the question. So, oops, three twenty four times five. So, if it does not say how to round, we're rounding to the nearest hundred. Ten seventeen point eight eight. Okay, and I'll answer your question now. So anyway, that's all you have to do. Now the question was, how do you know to give the exact answer or um, an approximation? So that's a good question. Um, I, when I find an exact answer, I always, I always pause. I find this one first, and then I find that. So in general, I, I find both, and then you know you choose. Now if the question says exact, you stop here. If it says to the nearest ten, hundredth, whatever, you do this. Um, if it doesn't say how to round, round to the nearest hundred. So I don't know if that answers your question. Maybe. Okay. So this one, the surface area of a sphere is 12.25 pi. That's a pi. It's a little hard to see that that's a pi, but it is. Square centimeter. Find the sphere's diameter. Okay. Uh, with these, you still write down, you know, here's the how you find the surface area of a sphere. What I do when I solve these, when it asks for something that isn't just running through the formula, it wants the R, right? I solve it for R first. Do you have to do that? No. You can put your values in and then solve the equation. I personally find this a little bit cleaner and a little bit easier. So if I divide both sides by um, 4 pi, I get R squared. If I want R, I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So I like, I like having my variable on the left side, so I'm going to put that there. So if you ever want the radius, of a sphere, that's all you have to do is, is put it in that formula and then just do it. So if you have a whole string of questions, find the radius, given these surface areas, you can just do this once and plug in. Now, except it didn't ask for radius, it asked for diameter. So you might want to get in the habit of just maybe highlighting or circling the, the important words like that. A, a diameter is twice the radius, so I'm going to multiply both sides by two, and now I found the diameter. So it's going to be two times the surface area, which they gave me, 12.25 pi over 4 pi. And then I'm like, oh, wait, wait, the pi's will cancel out. 
So it's 125 over 14 that square root times 2. So I'm going to try and do it in one step here. So I take 2 times the square root of 12.25 divided by 4. And uh, hopefully I get the right thing, 3.5. Look at that. 3.5 what? Observation. 
Yes, you can. So another way of taking cube root, if you if you forget, what button? What? Is if you can raise it to the one third power. Raising a number to the one third power is the same taking the cube root. So like uh, cube root. Uh, yeah. I know what the cube root of eight is, right? What's the cube root of eight? Two. 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 There it is. So I can also take eight and raise it. Remember, this is use this little thing here. That's how you raise to a power. In parentheses, put one third. Oops. Eight to the power. Of uh, so you get. You can do it either way. So however, it, it's easier for you to deal with cube roots. Either way is fine. Uh, a lot of people like the math part, which is fine. Okay. Uh, so we're up to the U-tries already. So you're basically just going to answer these questions. Um, this is what you're shooting for. So uh, make sure we can get those. I'm going to just pause here while you're working on that. The people are still working on it. And it's perfectly fine. I am going to ask you to just pause for a moment. You can come back to it. Um, we'll have time to come back and work on it. If you want to just like jot down what you're supposed to get. And then um, when we kind of finish up with this, you can go back and finish them. But were there any questions on the ones that you did? Yeah. This one? Uh, the radius of a sphere. So uh, I think I used that same formula I worked out before when um, I solved for uh, radius. I use this guy again because I have this one. Because I already solved for r. So I know that the radius of a sphere, when I know the volume, is the cube root of um, oh, what was it, 3b over 4 pi. Is that the right one? No, I forgot already. I think that's right. Ah, here it is. So I plugged in. So the cube root of uh, 3 times 91.95 over 4 pi. And then you just need to plug that in. Be careful with the uh, with the calculator. This is a lot of calculator calculator shift. I, I, I don't even know what the word is, but if you put that in, you should get the about 2.8. And are you getting that? Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Let's move on. We're on the back here. On the back. So um, as you recall, a couple of classes ago, uh, we were working with similar um, similar figures. And we noted then that if you knew the side or the perimeter ratio, right? If you knew that, let's say it was A to B, then you also knew the area ratio. And how'd you get it again? A squared over B squared. So it turns out, if you know the side or perimeter ratio, you also know the volume ratio. And that volume ratio was just A to the third over root of the third. This one, okay. So we can actually get all three. Area includes surface area. Those, that's an area. So that is included in, in this a squared over b squared. Uh, we're going to kind of talk to you about the side length ratio. We're going to give it a different name. We're going to call it scale factor, and I can't remember what that little chart is. Yeah, here it is, scale factor. So um, the scale factor ratio is maybe a better uh, term for it. The scale factor ratio here is A to B. That's the scale factor ratio. So the area ratio and surface area ratio would be A squared, B squared. So our next theorem tells us, or the next rule tells us, that if you want volume, it's A cubed over B cubed. Yes, sir. So is the scale factor uh, one, one side? It's like you multiply something. That's like the scale factor. Yes, yes, absolutely. Scale factor refers to like a side ratio. Yes, absolutely. I understand the question. Okay. I'm actually teaching the lesson here. Okay, so these are the important things. So if you know the scale factor, and um, you have a good point here, that's like the sides or the perimeters. If you know that ratio, then you also know the area or the surface area ratio. That will be A squared over B squared. And the volume ratio will be A cubed whoops, over B cubed. So let's see what happens here. OK, so here's an example. For this example, these numbers are insane. So look, did you find this example A? Yeah. If they're too hard, cross this out. I'm just going to make it 2 to 3. There's what you get for working in <laughs> That's what you get. I'm making it a little simpler because I want you to just follow a process at this point and not get hung up over numbers. So, okay, church. He's all excited. That's good. But, uh, you know, I'm trying to talk over. So, anyway, what's happening here? I've got these two cans, and typically, if they don't give you the pictures, I do draw them, and then I do exactly this. Stuff I know for the first one, I'll put here, 
and then I'll figure out what's going on here. The surface area and volume of the smaller can are these numbers, and they want me to find the surface area and the volume of the second can. Okay, so basically, I know the scale factor ratio. Here it is. They told me, and I told you. I changed it. It's two to three. So then what would the surface area ratio be? It's not bad. I don't know what he's doing. What is the surface area ratio? He's using it someplace else. So somebody was with me. Somebody was with me. Surface area ratio. Leave me hanging. Leave me. What? The surface area is 90. No, I don't want the answer. Yeah, the the ratio. Okay, guys, listen. The ratio is 40. Somebody tell me the surface area ratio. I know that you're pretty still. Yes. 4 over 90 squared. Now, what would the volume ratio be? Volume ratio, yes sir. Eight over twenty-seven. What 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 uh, is a common mistake that he did not make? He did not make a mistake. He's absolutely right. You go back here, you cube these numbers. Two to the third power is eight, three to the third power is twenty-seven. Once again, if you're um I'm not real good at my my perfect cubes or anything, just remember if you want to raise something to the third power, use that little carrot and you just can you know you can find it out if you don't know it. Do not go here and square this or do anything to this one. That's a common mistake. You might find yourself wanting to do that. Don't. Always go back to your scale factor ratio. Yes, sir. SA, surface area ratio. This one, volume. Scale factor ratio, surface area ratio, volume ratio. Okay. And you don't want to do it, okay? I don't want to do that. You're absolutely right. So uh, be careful. This is what you're squaring, and this is what you're cubing. So now I have my different ratios. So if I want surface area, pick your surface area ratio. Small to big is 4 to 9. I know what the small one uh, surface area is. And you do this, cross product. Okay, give me one second, please. Okay, so uh, what is it? 40 point seven three. Times nine divide by four and uh, ninety one point six four approximately. And then what are my units here? Square inches. It's an area, so you use square inches. Now it says okay, so that's this number, not that one. Now I have to find the volume. There's my volume ratio. That's eight to twenty seven. Small to big. Small to big. I'm working with this one now. Seventeen point one six over that you know second volume. Cross product. So do it. Just make sure I'm doing this right. So you need to be doing it too. The chances are real good. I'm going to make a mistake here, and I also want to know that you can do it. So divide by eight. I'm getting 57.92 approximately to the nearest hundred. And what kind of units do we use for volume? Cubic units. Inches cubic, cubic inches. So this one, that's hard to read. 57.92 cubic inches. Question or comment? Yes. Currently, the year over 27 is squared in 300,763 over 100. What, wait, what? It's greater than that? Yeah, because the ratio is, that ratio is actually larger. What are we talking about? What, 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 are, what are we comparing to? Apparently, production. Okay, so it's basically, it's not that this is so hard. Figure out what the different ratios are. Figure out what you're trying to find. Make sure your proportion's going, like I'm going small to big. Make sure you're going in the same order. And cross product, don't forget your unit. That's it, that's really it. Uh, I have another example here. Is there a question? No? Okay. Okay. All righty, so we're, in, we're on the back on page two here, and we're looking at uh, the second example, example B. So I have two similar pyramids. Uh, I know the volume of one of them, pyramid P, it's 125 cubic inches. So uh, I mark this down right under it so I can see what I'm doing. Pyramid Q, that volume is 64 cubic inches. It says find the scale factor of pyramid P to pyramid Q. So scale factor, that's size. Okay? So I know the volume ratio. So I can jot that down. 125 to 64. And so if I want to go to the scale factor ratio, what am I going to do? How do I do it? How do I get there? Yeah? Cube root. Because I get here by cubing, so to go backwards, you take the cube root. Now again, cube root of 125, 
is 5, and the cube root of 64 is uh, 4. Now, if your cube roots aren't so good, you know, maybe you have a little less practice with those, use the calculator, press the math button, number 4 is within the 125. You know, you can get it that way if your cube roots aren't as strong. But you might want to start, you know, trying to remember them. But that's the whole answer. That's it. That's all they want. Uh, so we're up to the new tries already. So um, I'm going to put answers up so that you can go back and forth and see how you're doing. Uh, so can I start working on them. Be nice and organized. Right? Make sure you know what ratios go with what kind of a theory. Looking at the scale factor, the surface area, the volumes. Um, so again, the, the answers are up here just for you to check when you get there. I'm just going to scroll through everything up. And that's basically for this lesson.